Good evening and welcome to tonight's webinar where we look at member only content for ASX Investment Opportunities in Review for the 7th of June. Any individual reading or listening should discuss with their financial planner or advisor the merits of any recommendation recommendation or offer presented in this material for their own specific circumstances and realise that not all investments are appropriate for every individual. Investor Signals provides a broking account service. If you'd like to know more about that, please contact me on 1300 614 002. The technology I'm using tonight is the Investor Signals member area. You can subscribe to it for $1,320 for the year. If you're joining us for the first time as part of your 30-day trial, Please uh, feel free to contact me anytime in the office if you'd like some more guidance on how to use the technology. The chart up on screen is the NASDAQ. We're looking at a retest of roughly 50% of the sell-off, so we'll take a closer look at this in a moment. But uh, the sell-off that we've had roughly just below 10% during this period here, which is really as a result of US interest rates starting to rise, and I'll look at some graphs of that before we get into the top 100 shares tonight. But we had this sell-off and now we've had a bounce back as US interest rates have plateaued and we look at the 10-year treasuries as the benchmark there and they've bumped along just below 1.6%. That um, sideways consolidation in the uh, treasuries or in the and stabilisation in US interest rates has allowed the technology stocks to rally again. We're about four weeks out from the second quarter of US earnings and we'll continue to track the run, weight, the run rate of those S&P 500 companies. So this is a table we've looked at previously. We um, have a level of interest here around what the earnings were like in 2018 and 2019, given that 2021 is to at least get back to those levels, if not slightly exceed that. So we continue to watch the quarterly numbers. In the March quarter, the run run rate was up at around $40. So on that basis, we're at least uh, on an annualised basis back at where we were. So what we need to see is this June quarter, as it comes through in four weeks' time, we need to see something around that $40 level or slightly higher. Uh, I suspect we're on course to achieve um, this 2021 target of whether it's 168 or 173 depending on analysts you know there's some variance there but that's essentially what the market's looking for we'll call it 170 as the midpoint so 170 dollars of earnings on average for each company on the s p 500 uh, and that that relates to the number of shares that are on issue obviously where the growth and the lofty expectation for the market is that in 2022 we're looking for that to accelerate up to $200 of earnings per share which helps to justify why at these levels the index was at 3,000 points we're now at 4,200 points for the S&P 500 so we need interest rates to either stay low or if interest rates start to rise, we need to be certain that we're going to achieve this level of earnings to justify the valuation of the market. Uh, we keep in the back of our mind this picture, which is the growth that the technology area or the NASDAQ index has had. This has been the, uh, obviously that was the 2000 tech bubble there. Uh, since the pandemic, we've had the sell-off in March last year and then the technology areas doubled in value is this sustainable well in a low interest rate environment it's certainly more sustainable than it is if we get into a period where interest rates start rising and just on that interest rate picture let's have a look at uh, the cnbc website uh, up on here is the 10-year treasury yields this is a you know benchmark that a lot of markets are priced off um, if we look at this, you can see there it's trading at 1.58, so just below the 1.6%. This is a 12-month graph here. We can see that since March, it's essentially moved sideways. So when I refer to interest rates or the 10-year rates bumping along sideways, this is what I'm referring to. So we've had a consolidation since sort of April. That's allowed the NASDAQ to recover a little. If we were to see this breakout higher, we'd expect to see the, Na the NASDAQ in particular uh, start to struggle to move higher and it 
and that's just one scenario that plays out if inflation picks up interest rates suddenly spike you'd expect to see further selling pressure in uh, tech stocks especially areas that have less earning support so high PE valuations and you know to some extent we've already seen it in the riskiest assets so something like Tesla for instance has corrected from $800 down to $570 you've seen cryptocurrencies you know fall up to 50% so the risky areas of the market have already started to correct as a result of interest rates moving higher uh, if we have a look at this on a sort of slightly longer term perspective this is over five years so we've seen um, you know, interest rates move lower, uh, especially post the pandemic there in 2020, we saw interest rates fall. So this is worth just pausing to have a think about. So as I mentioned earlier, in 2018, 2019, the economy was relatively strong. Interest rates come down a little in 2019 as a result of a flattening earnings picture, um, you know, partly around the uh, uh, trade war with China there you know, under Trump administration and then we start to get into a situation where <coughs> interest rates <coughs> at this point in time so let's call it roughly 3% for the most part through 2018-2019 so the 10 year was tracking at around 3% and at that point the index was worth 3,000 points if earnings stay at around that 170 level um, but yet we interest rates stay down here, then obviously you've got a justification for the market being at higher uh, PE ratios and trading at a higher valuation. So what we're really interested in now is has the interest rate cycle bottomed? And this is looking back over you know, 30, 40 years. And if we go back to 1980, interest rates were up at around 15%. Now we're down at a tenth of that at 1.5 percent what you'll note here is each economic cycle we've essentially made lower lows and lower highs in the interest rates so this is part of a function of uh, increasing debt levels and the serviceability of that debt uh, each time you know the, the market has less capacity to uh, to pay higher interest rates uh, so are we in an environment where this just simply continues and interest rates you know, fail to really break out like some commentators are talking about at the moment? Uh, you know, do we just get a continuation of these lower low, lower high pattern that's been in place for over 30 years? Or as a result of the uh, huge amount of money that's essentially been printed as a result of the pandemic, uh, have the uh, you know, reserve banks created an oversupply of money which leads to a pickup in inflation like we haven't seen previously so the first trigger for that would be obviously as a starting point as a minimum to see the yields break above where they were only a few months back which would be above roughly you know 1.65 1.7 percent uh, but ultimately you'd really want to see interest rates get above three percent to be convinced that there's a change in that long-term trend so tonight as we go through the top 100 stocks i'll just share some comments around companies that are more sensitive to the interest rate picture um, Taking a closer look at the NASDAQ here before I move into the top 100. So we looked at this previously where we recognise that uh, we're seeing this rebound back at the moment. But are we going to run into resistance below this high, which uh, would tie in with interest rates starting to move a little bit higher, or it could tie in with uh, slightly softer earnings for the June period when announced in mid-July. So they're two uh, key indicators we continue to watch. For the moment, right on a short-term basis, the index uh, traded below the average on Thursday night, and then on Friday night it was a strong session, and the driver of that was we saw slightly softer uh, employment numbers in the US, which meant that this inflation scare was a little, was less sensitive. Interest rates pulled back a little and that created the environment for the NASDAQ to rally. Um, and we'll continue to sort of watch that and I'll comment on that in future recordings. Uh, 
<coughs> moving into the top 100 stocks and let's focus on the opportunities that we want to be taking action on in the market at the moment. Uh, so we get the percentage gains to the top, uh, organise them in buy signals. So I'll be moving through these, looking at the best performing stocks today under buy signal, get a certain way through the list. It'll switch the sell signals and I'll draw your attention to when that occurs. TPG, I commented on the blog, this is really a recovery trade and a short term uh, trading opportunity really. Although although you know, the longer term fundamentals are still reasonably sound for TPG, but we do want to see more data out of the merged picture with Vodafone as to what the earnings look like. What we do know is there are cost synergies and uh, you know, TPG you know, post Vodafone merger uh, is generating a significant amount of free cash flow which will likely lead to increased dividends over the next two to three years which should be a supportive for the share price. So are we at an inflection point here? The way to think about it is really to run a stop loss below this low just here and recognize that we're now starting to get what looks to be the beginning of a pickup in buying interest, volume starting to increase. So stop loss below the pivot lows, stick with the trade and see if we start to get a little bit of buying momentum follow through here. Eltium today uh, announced to the market that they received a takeover a bid from Autodesk, which is a US technology company. Uh, the takeover was at about a 35% premium. The company's rejected the takeover bid, so we'll now just wait to see whether Autodesk come back with a higher offer. Uh, Altium was one that I was talking about both on the blog and in prior recordings, saying that this is a really high quality tech company and likely to find buying support down here where it is at the moment. I can't say that I foresaw the the, the takeover bid coming, but uh, uh, certainly offered value there at around that $26 level, and I'd been communicating that. Appen is a little higher risk. We've seen commentary out of the company just in the last few weeks about uh, cost cutting, a little bit of um, reorganization. Uh, and starting to report their earnings in US dollars. So we've seen a little pickup in the share price. I can't say that it's really off anything that's um, uh, evident at this point in time, but the market seems to have responded favorably to those couple of uh, you know, refocused points that, that, that management's uh, highlighted to the market. Uh, the takeover bid for Altium has sort of helped to create a bit of buying interest in generally some of these large cap tech stocks on the ASX and as we move through these we'll see they're among the best performers from today. So that explains sort of why Appen had a strong day today. Again if you're looking for trades you could think about owning it with a stop loss below that but certainly a little bit higher risk than the opportunity there with TPG. Wise Tech we've seen this, this is under algorithm buy conditions that shifted from sells which is the red box up the top to buys down the bottom here, supported around 25 now pushing up to $30. A2 Milk looks like a recovery is underway here. Um, in the absence of any data, it really is just the market sort of taking advantage of you know depressed share price and hoping that um, over the next sort of three months we start to see slightly more positive commentary out of the company. But we've seen the share price rally from around five now up to five eighty. Uh, we own the stock and we also own the six dollar call options into August. Uh, so giving ourselves a little bit of time and looking for some positive news flow between now and August to push that stock price up. If you want to know more about those option strategies, just give me a call or send me an email. Afterpay under algorithm buy signals, but uh, is in the model portfolios, but not a stock that I'm active in. Charter Hall preference remains SLF, and which is the um, REIT ETF and I'll look at that at the end of the recording. Goodman Group we like shifted from sell conditions uh, back in 2020 into buy conditions here in March uh, it, it, at the beginning of this year and the stocks rallied from $16 up to $20. Uh, well above average earnings growth there, about 10 to 14 percent expected earnings growth. GPT support creating higher high and higher low here, so looking for support to, and the share price to build on top of this $4.50 level. So you, GPT is high quality office trust obviously, but another alternative which I'd argue is slightly lower risk is just owning that SLF ETF. 
Um, Beach Energy uh, disappointed from those uh, production guidance. Stock price fell from 170 down to 125. It is underperforming after after switch after having a buy signal uh, in January February earlier this year. Our preference, though, uh, which I've been consistent about in the, in the communications on the blog and the webinars, has been uh, Woodside Petroleum over Beach and that starting to perform well for us. REA Group, terrific business but very expensive, 60 times earnings or more than that, 65 times earnings. Could be getting a little expensive where it is at the moment but we've seen the switch from sell conditions there into buy conditions at 106 and the stock's up substantially since then. Mervac Group under buy conditions. Uh, Sol Patterson under buy conditions, original signal there in February and then another one in end of April, support there at around that $28 level but not one that I'm active in myself. Uh, again all these are in the model portfolio so these are stocks that have switched from sell conditions into buy conditions and therefore that you'll find them in the ASX100 model portfolio. Atlas Group doing well after bouncing off support, IDP moving higher after switching to buy conditions. Cockley has rallied from around 180 up to 230, so that continues to do well. Zero under buy conditions. Uh, we'll continue to like the lo the longer term thematic that's driving vel driving the share price here for zero. Uh, the stock is a little expensive, but it is high quality and happy to be a buyer of that on any future pullbacks. Uh, Woolworths, so this is a consumer staple stock, so we've been long Woolworths over Coles. Uh, Woolworths has rallied from roughly 38 up to 43. Again, you'll find the stock in the model portfolio as a result of it switching from sell conditions into buy conditions. So it is a holding in the top 20, the top 50 and the top 100 model. Uh, one of the uh, opportunities to remember here is the upcoming spin-off of Endeavour Drinks and you'll get exposure to uh, to those shares. Evolution, preference Northern Star, but Evolution's under buy signals. Downer Group EDI, I like this and we hold that in portfolios. They should deliver high single digit earnings growth. Another alternative to Downer though is Simic. I think Simic's in a multi-year recovery. Northern Star Resources remains our preferred gold exposure and we're happy to add to that at around that $10.50 level. Treasury Wines has rallied consistently above the moving average so for traders or shorter term if you think about this we had the algorithm buy signal, the green arrow, the cross of the share price above the moving average. It stayed above the average, get out of the trade as you see it move below that moving average and that's a setup for traders. Investors are likely to stick with the trade as long as it sits under buy conditions there. Blue Scope Steel under buy conditions it switched from sell to algorithm buy here at around $16 now pushing 22. We had a more recent signal there in May off the low there at around $19, $20. Uh, ResMed under buy conditions, uh, we see this shift from sell to buy, uh, originally there at around $14, now pushing up to $26. But we've seen a number of buy signals also throughout this structure here, and the stocks continue to make higher highs and higher lows. A number of um, you know large portfolio managers remain bullish on ResMed and remains one of their top picks for um, you know, within the healthcare space. Illumina are under buy conditions, so it switched from sell there in a buy supported around 160. Hasn't done too much, it's mostly bumping sideways above that. Uh, oil search now under buy conditions, uh, preference remains Woodside over oil search. Uh, Stocklands under buy conditions, switch from sell there into buy, so we hold this in the model portfolio, support at $4, now pushing four seventy. so that's done well since we added it in. Uh, ALS, switch from sell conditions into buy conditions there at around nine thirty, now pushing twelve fifty. Uh, JB Hi-Fi, so switch from sell into buy all the way back here. $21 now pushing 48 continues to make higher highs and higher lows and we see the algorithm buy signal there and the most current one was off the support there at around $43. It'll be really interesting to have a close look at JB Hi-Fi's result in uh, July, August when they report 
the uh, the half year results for for 21 uh, challenger group now under buy conditions uh, but stock was a little bit cautious on but just highlight that it's switched from sell to now buy conditions the index itself so we've seen this under buy conditions since forming a low there uh, back in September last year Link administration now under buy conditions, so it switched from sells up here into buy at around $4.50. Uh, Link's actually an interesting opportunity, and there is some upside for Link. Uh, so Link and computer share, we actually don't mind. Woodside Petroleum, so under buy conditions, that's our preferred energy exposure. That's now rallied from 22 up to 24. Santos under buy conditions. Uh, Aurora under buy conditions. We'd have a closer look at that in the coming months if we saw it pull back. Macquarie, so we've, this is one of our preferred sort of financial exposures at the moment. Macquarie under algorithm buy conditions off that 150 level. We've seen the company uh, indicate that earnings are up about 10% on uh, where they were pre-pandemic. Sydney Airport's under buy conditions, but sort of tough on the visibility there of earnings. Centre Group now under buy conditions, but again, think about SLF rather than holding too many individual REITs. Domino Pizzas, we like this, so it's switched from sell conditions uh, back in 2019 to buy conditions. Uh, we had the first signal here at around 72, second signal here at around this $85 level. The stock's now trading 115. To me, starting to get a little expensive and you might want to be patient and wait for a pullback to the next algo signal. Seek switch from sell conditions to buy support they're around 25 now pushing 30 but seek is expensive cba has done extremely well since switching from sell conditions into buy conditions here at 80 dollars now pushing up to 100 over 100 dollars if you're looking to you know um, reduce the number of positions in your portfolio one of the strategies we've been running is taking profit on cba and buying macquarie uh, just as a valuation sort of you know, um, argument there that cba is clearly the better bank uh, but it is getting expensive where it is at the moment there cube holdings we like this as we hold this in the model portfolio it's sold switch from sell conditions there into buy at around 250 further support there was around that 270 to 80 level that i've been drawing your attention to on the blog we're now pushing up to around 320. The driver here is that port volumes containers into the main, major ports in Australia is up about 11% on the same time last year. So we're continuing to see growth as we have done for each month this year up substantially on the same time last year. Lendlease, uh, this is one of the few stocks that really hasn't recovered. Uh, and an explanation for that is a little bit of uncertainty around the whole urbanisation uh, development uh, business model uh, you know is that still the right strategy uh, I, I suspect that the market may be getting a little too pessimistic here on lend lease uh, and it could be now sort of one that sits in that recovery uh, bucket opportunity if we look at technically what's happening it's under algorithm buy conditions it's got the green arrow there and price actions now above the moving average and I'll continue to revisit that on the blog computer share switch from sell conditions into algorithm buy originally there at around 12 continuing to make higher highs and higher lows uh, maybe getting a little expensive up at around $17 and you may want to be a little bit patient wait for a pullback and another buy signal but the fundamentals there for computer share and link remain attractive. Wes Farmers, extremely high quality business. Uh, we saw a little, um, just first glimpse, I guess, of some caution coming out of the company, which was just a reference to um, how expensive lumber prices are and the impact that that's having on supply and, and you know, and, and as a consequence, some levels of demand as well. Um, Wes Farmers, though, high quality business earnings to be, you know, low, uh, I think low teens, I think we're likely to see earnings over 10%, uh, <coughs> supporting the, you know, roughly a 4% dividend yield. Uh, and we've got the scope there where we may see a special dividend or uh, share buyback return of capital. Um, 
So I think at around $55 for the moment, we have a view that the stock is expensive, but should be reasonably well supported and any pullback should be pretty shallow at the moment. Aristocrat under buy conditions, we've seen that switch from sell uh, in May 2020 into buy conditions, supported around the $30, now pushing 40. It is a stock in the model portfolios, as is Fortescue. Uh, iron ore still remains at fairly lofty levels. Um, you know, it wasn't that long ago we thought 150 was expensive for or, or you know near resistance for iron ore and we're now consolidating up at 200 uh, US a ton. Intertech pivot switch from sell conditions into buy conditions the early stages but looking for support to develop there at around 220 and looking for the share price to start moving a little bit higher. Uh, Qantas under buy conditions, the Star Entertainment under buy conditions clean away keep an eye on this uh, we're starting to see as I move through these charts tonight and you may do this in your own time you'll notice that we're in a period where we're getting a large percentage of companies uh, that are under these red arrows so just to revisit this is the primary algorithm signals so that's the primary buy and the primary sell these red and green arrows are shorter term or interim signals so what this chart's telling us that the stock's under buy conditions but for this rally that's occurred we're now maybe getting to a point where it's going to start running into some selling we're starting to see that so clean away starting to pull back if we were to see this pull back anywhere below $2.50 uh, I'd see that as another great buying opportunity and obviously I'll draw your attention to it on the blog if that occurs. Linus under buy conditions at the moment and AGL Energy was starting to rally a little bit there from oversold levels. So I won't go through all the stocks, I'll just draw your attention to a couple. So we've been talking about the recovery trade in Origin, we've now seen that break out above that $4 uh, support level, traded above the moving average now pushing higher. Uh, Likewise, the other recovery trade that we're talking about is IAG. We've seen this now rally from around that 470 level up to 525. Uh, and the other one, Simic, is a recovery play uh, that we're holding. Now, you can, I suspect that we're looking at a multi-year recovery here for Simic as the company's cleaned up their balance sheet. Uh, this, com this has the potential to trade up into that $30, $35 price range as we get more visibility on normalization of earnings and some of, and those risks in the rear vision mirror around the balance sheet. Uh, one way to approach this is to own call options. So again, if you'd like to talk to me about how to set up the option strategy as an alternative to owning the stock outright, I can uh, run you through some uh, ideas there that, that we're using or and give you a few other examples as well. But Simic's a good recovery play opportunity in the market that we like. Uh, and on the ETF side, earlier in the recording, I mentioned the SLF. So this is our preferred way of holding exposure to the REIT sector. Um, you know, we started uh, buying this at lower levels, uh, now pushing $13. Another al alternative to the SLF is the MVA, which is um, essentially you know, very same or similar uh, basket of stocks. But this is a Van Eyck vector ETF and we if we have a look at this uh, it's also uh, it's also been trending in a very similar pattern there uh, and this was added into portfolios at lower levels and now trading up to around $23. A couple of ETFs that uh, to think about we remain uh, long this one here which is the US biotech uh, hasn't really rallied too much yet but at around this $60 level I think we're getting pretty close to a floor there and looking for upside in that. Uh, interesting the uh, IZZ which is the long China ETF uh, it's now switched to sell conditions. We haven't cut this from portfolios yet but we are very mindful and watching closely. Are we in a pattern here where it's actually going to break down into a lower, lower, lower high? Uh, we've got the sell signal there, resistance at around $62, and I'm following that closely. But from a fundamental standpoint, uh, you know, I feel that sort of you know there is some value that's appearing in some of these uh, Asian 
uh, markets, so not just China, uh, but uh, you know the IZZ is one way to play broad exposure into China. If we want to focus on technology shares, this one here, which is the Beta Shares Asia Technology Tiger ETF, support there at around eleven dollars. You can think about that. Uh, the other one that we've been looking at in prior recordings, so just revisiting this, is the Asia iShare Fifty. Uh, support there at around that 110 level. A uh, couple of stocks. Uh, we've taken profit today on Breville Group uh, up at up at around that 20 uh, 28 uh, 90 level today. We've taken profit on that. Uh, one that we're still sitting in is uh, uh, BGA, which is the Bega Cheese. Uh, this switched. Uh, well, sorry, switched from sell conditions into buy conditions back in June last year. Support was at around that 440 level. We've seen the stock rally. It's pulled back now. It's under buy conditions. Got the green arrow. Looking for support there to develop it around that 560 level. Uh, and maybe the driver of that will be sort of more into the August earnings results if, um, if we see those high single digit earnings growth that the market's looking for. And that really summarises, I won't cover the US market tonight, we'll look at that in next week's recording. Uh, if you've got any questions or like further tuition on how to use the software, please don't hesitate to give me a call. And likewise, if you want to have a chat about opening a broking account, uh, please contact me on 1300 614 002. Thanks for listening in, I look forward to speaking again next week.